Okay, we're back working on this 2016 Kia Soul. We're going to be replacing this AC line. This is the the big line in here, or uh, I think they call it the suction line. Now this is a big monstrosity of an AC line, the most difficult one of the two to replace. And not only was mine bent, but the Schrader and the threads on that was messed up as well. Don't know how that happened. Before we do anything, we're just going to get this decorative cover out of the way. Alright, so uh, this is the low pressure line that you see. Or low pressure port, anyways. And it runs from the uh, expansion valve there. Got two lines coming off of it. I guess it serves as both. And uh, it runs in under this motor mount. Coming back over here to our sensor. And splitting one of them coming up here to the condenser on this side <clears throat> and the other one is down underneath there and it's bent uh, so this was involved in a wreck and it, it bent it and I should have replaced it at the time but I did not so now I'm having to deal with it but I'm gonna get AC in this car one way or the other now the first thing I'm gonna have to do is get it on ramps gonna be working from above and below okay first thing we're gonna do is get on here and get this piece of plastic that is um, covering this under here and I will probably leave this piece off for a while because I do have some drips <clears throat> until I get all those fixed and located I don't need this hiding them so we've got some 10 millimeters running around here not a big deal and I think we may have Let's see, we got some up here in the front. Do we have any clips at all? Looks like I got some clips here and here. So you may have more clips here, but this was um, damaged in the wreck and this got like cut off. I just started removing these two clips down here first. So we're going to get on our tins now. And down here in the middle, they got this, like, I think it's a, just a plastic. Get that off of there. Matter of fact, I think we can just pull that down. Right now, we're working our way at the back here. Getting the rip. It's about to fall down on me now. Okay, so I'm not dealing with this piece here either, so it's coming out of the way. This is just a piece in the fender well here. So it looks like it's just leaking around, all around this uh, oil pan here. Could have looks like it got hit, so probably got a little bit of a crack or something. Like I always say, you go to trying to fix one thing and you find problems you didn't even know you had. But anyways, back to this AC line. Okay, so we're looking at the compressor here. We're gonna get on that 12 millimeter you see right there. You can use a socket or whatever. I'm just got my little 12 millimeter wrench. It shouldn't be just terribly tight, but you never know. It's pretty tight. All right, let's so get this out. Now there's no pressure on the system, but you know, always wear safety glasses. Just to be cautious and you know anytime you're under the car 
you need to have them on. And we can just kind of leave that there to minimize getting anything in here. And um, the air getting in for now. But we got the bolt out. Now you can probably tell by looking at yours, this is not supposed to be bent this way. Okay, so the next thing I've done is brought my jack under here. Got a block, and I'm just going to get some tension on it here. Okay, we got tension on the engine. It is supported. We're going to take a, so it was a 17 millimeter, and we are going to remove this entire piece. So we got to take these three nuts and this bolt. And a little bit of a bind. I think we can probably leave this. It may be easier to get it out, but I think we can leave it. Okay, now we've got a couple of clamps. Got a 10 millimeter right down there. Need to get that out. And then we've also got one over here on this side. So we're going to get on both of those. This one will be more difficult to put back. A 10 millimeter. You know, this up here is a 12 millimeter as well. I have to push down on this line to avoid bending that evaporator. It's really tight. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm going to start trying to work this out of here. See how much luck we're going to have. All right, because those are flexible, it gives you a little bit of give there.
kind of want to work from the top and the bottom because it tries to get hung up. So the flex lines make it doable. All right, I was using a couple of crescents to get the sensor loose. You need to hold the block and then use the other or a wrench or whatever. This came with some more O-rings. I think this is probably fine. I'm going to thread it in here, hopefully. So this bracket I transferred, this little piece that goes right on this little rubber piece that's already on here. Now, this other one here, it's like crimped down here. I'm not going to mess with that because, I, frankly, I think this one is enough to hold this in place. It's not going to move. So we're not even going to move that one over. You'll note that I taped these ends up pretty good. Don't want to take any chance when getting this in place that we're going to damage those ends. Probably put some tape on here too. I was uh, hoping to get this in before it got dark, but it might not happen. So we're going to feed this end back down here first. It's like we kind of, <clears throat> when we brought it out. And so again, I'm going to kind of work from up here and underneath to kind of get things back where I need it. Just watching what I'm doing. So not too bad. These flex lines really make it a lot easier. And um, said so if it was for that, it would be a little more difficult. Probably be some more removal. So we got it fed down there to that point. And this is just kind of sticking up here, but just like with bringing it out, we can bend our flex lines, poke that back up in there. Okay, so we're making some progress. We're just feeding it back down in here. Okay, so I think I'm gonna work on hooking these lines up first. Okay, I'm putting a little of this um, clean padule. And this little AC line is not wanting to stay in its spot at all. So, so the um, lines, the way they're setting, don't like to line up. So you gotta push them where they need to go. And of course, you know, when you don't have a lot of room. Okay, so it takes a little working this thing around and pushing it into place to get it where you need it. So to have a little patience, kind of you have to push it in there where you need it. Right, I'm just locking this down nice and snug. Um, you don't want to overdo it. You'd be replacing the expansion valve because it felt like it was over tightened the first time. Okay, now as you can see, when this is up here and this one is in place, there's no way that that line is going to go anywhere. It's over a pretty good bit. And we're just going to lock that 10 millimeter back down in there. And we'll get this line up here, get it in place. And the same way we put the pad jewel on the other, we're going to put it on this one right here. Okay, so we'll get that down in place. Okay, so I'm just getting this 10 millimeter on right back here. Okay, we just got that snug down. Okay, let's get a little bit of oil on this one. And we're going to just feed it up here. Let's 
transmission lines or cooler lines are in the way. Okay, I will say that this thing is like nothing but a fight to get that pin to line up there, but I did get it. I think what we're going to do is just, I'm going to get this bolt in and just going to quit for the night. We'll pick up in the daylight. It just seemed like it got dark so quick. Okay, so back out here today. Now, this 2.0 liter engine actually takes a different line than the 1.6 liter. I thought they looked similar. But there, the difference is down here where it connects to the pump. Now it a um, little bit different, so the line was kinking. So I kind of like persuaded them a little bit, and I'm hoping that this is gonna gonna work out. And uh, also, maybe somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but the only place I could find the uh, 2.0 liter suction line was a uh, dealership. With Kia and and they're like three hundred dollars and up, so I'm not doing that. So I do know one thing that I'm not using my original line because um, not only is it bent, the Schrader's bad, but the um, um, flex hose has also got a tear in it. I don't know if it was from rubbing on the belt or what, but it's got a tear down there, so there's no way I could use that. So I'm hoping that this one is going to work out. And I went ahead. I got the uh, motor mount back in place and I've got the ground here in place. Everything is uh, snugged up. Uh, got one bolt down there. Got our sensor on. And so we're going to go ahead and just vacuum it down and see what's going to happen. Now here's my original that was on here. You can see we got a really nice tear right there. All right, so I've let it set 30 minutes. Vacuum is holding great. All right, now the only thing left to do is just get our little plastic pan or cover back under here. Okay, so that's going to do it on replacing this AC line. Uh, like I said, uh, it is not the original high, uh, low pressure line, but um, I did get it to work. So uh, definitely probably want to get the uh, original one to go on there. This is more for the 1.6 liters, but was able to get it to work. So anyways, I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And thanks for watching.